PPH postpartum hemorrhage in this video we will see a lot of things about postpartum hemorrhage right from what it means and uh, the definition of it a little bit about the causes and a lot about management let's start so PPH stands for postpartum hemorrhage it's one of the medical emergencies seen in obstetricians daily routine maybe okay so um that was about bph introduction so what happens is postpartum hemorrhage the child is delivered and after that the bleeding happens that's pretty normal but if it's going to happen in a anything which is more than normal that is abnormal okay so here what happens is postpartum hemorrhage there will be bleeding bleeding post delivery uh cutoff times is based on whether the delivery is either per vaginum or be or lses so in PV delivery, that is in a normal vaginal delivery, if the do if the quantity of blood is more than half a liter, we call it PPH. But in a lower seg lower segment cesarean section, the cutoff is one liter. So only if it is more than one liter, we call it PPH. Again, there are two types of PPH: primary and secondary. Primary means no known cause, but obviously it has four T's as the cause. The T's are tone trauma tissue thrombin so atonic bph comes under primary bph as such there is no known cause but yeah again those for the the causes secondary bph is just the cause is retained placenta the only distinction between the primary and secondary bph is the timing the primary bph is going to happen within 24 hours after the birth of delivery of the child whereas Secondary PPH is happening after 24 hours after birth and up to 12 weeks after birth, okay? Atonicity, uh, there are a million causes, but I've handpicked good number of causes alone, which we will learn now. Atonicity can occur because of general reasons like anemia and malnutrition in the mother. So like the mother is very weak, her general muscle tone is weak and that is why the uterine muscle tone is weak as well. Otherwise, there could be a problem with the uterus, like it can be a uterine anomaly or a fibroid, and two problems with the placenta, like placenta previa and abruptia placenta. Third, it can be an over-distended uterus, which can be, again, because of polyhydramnios, too much of uh, amniotic fluid, or it can be multiparity, meaning the tone of the uterus is very less. Maybe it is because of a big head for the fetus, like hydrops fetalis. Of course, we can think about when pregnancy is causing atonic PPH because the uterus is quite stretched for some time, okay? Otherwise, prolonged labor, precipitate labor can produce PPH because uh, it should be in the cutoff of three hours to... Uh, 24 hours but if it's going to be more than 24 hours labor then it's prolonged labor precipitate labor if, if the labor duration is less than three hours or less than six hours it is going to be precipitate labor okay so uh, otherwise it can be because of giving epidural analgesia excessive sedation and induction of labor when the labor does not start spontaneously we are inducing labor then the drugs can cause uh, postpartum hemorrhage as the side effect so treatment of PPH, PPH is a deadly disease. It is a very deadly disease. So we have to diagnose it. Diagnosis is based on an index. Just look for a calculator and search for shock index. Calculate the shock index. The shock index will be 0.5 to 0.7 in a normal person. But if it is more than 0.9, it is a very absolute indication for blood transfusion. So the first thing, first, always, whenever we are uh, uh, we are looking at postpartum hemorrhage, we have to call for help because a single pay, single doctor will not be sufficient to uh, save the person from dying. So call for help. And second, immediately you have to give an antifibrinolytic agent, which is IV tranexamic acid, Trapic. Okay, Trapic is a very good drug. It's used in AUB. Might as well be used in PPH because AUB on a larger scale is PPH basically okay immediately the next step is we have to check the uterine tone the uterine tone is very the uterus is flaccid and very soft and not contracted at all it's going to be atonic PPH which occurs in 90% of the cases of PPH so it is atonic otherwise it can be because of the trauma trauma thrombin and tissue tissues like retained placenta atonic PPH good treatment will be a tonic PPS, the treatment will be of two types, preliminary and specific treatment. So in preliminary, there are two IV cannula has to be inserted immediately and draw blood, start IV fluids, give urinary catheterization. 
draw blood for blood transfusion start iv fluids iv fluids mostly we might want to start crystalloids and urinary catheterization is very important because once we do urinary catheterization the bladder gets empty and the bladder is empty means the uterus can contract very freely okay and second we can also monitor the urine output which is also very important okay and then comes uh, specific management specific management olden days the who used to say uterine massage yeah, go for it for amsel active management of third stage of labor but now uterine massage as such is more of uh, inconvenience to the patient so we don't have to give uterine massage as such but we can give uh, certain drugs okay there are um, uh, certain formalities which we uh, one can say it's a table of contents which one might have to follow first we give drugs and after that if drugs don't work we give a tamponade which is nothing but a compression effect on the uterus by various methods after that you have to like cut off the blood supply by giving devascularization meaning just ligation of the atrius here and there fourth if that does not work we give embolization meaning a big size artery is going to be uh, injected with polyvinyl alcohol and something to embolize it and after that even then if it's not going to subside you just remove the uterus that's a grave thing you delivered a baby and you're losing a uterus is a really bad thing to happen okay so we'll see the drugs first there are six drugs but the first four are very important because they are the most commonly used ones oxytocin methyl ergometrine carboprost mesoprostol carbotocin and syntometrin oxytocin can be given im and iv but noted noted iv bolus should never be given in case of oxytocin iv drips can be given in oxytocin oxytocin can be mixed with a 500 ml normal saline or it can be mixed with just like distilled water and given but you never have to give iv oxytocin as a injection which is otherwise called a bolus because it will cause arrhythmia meaning immediately the person is going to go for a heart attack okay syn methyl ergometrine can be given in iv im both carboprost is given im precisely speaking it is given not into the uh, shoulder area it is given into the myometrium so it's an intra myometrial tissue that is carboprost just look at the second letter in carboprost over here right here shit one second yeah the second letter in carboprost what happens is asthma um yeah we'll just see it later so carboprost is given im or iv and then mesoprostol is given it's either given pv or pr carbotocin syntometrine are other group of drugs okay oxytocin is a drug uh, we'll see uh, every drug in great detail oxytocin have to be refrigerated and uh, oxytocin vials are available in the market uh, 10 international units of oxytocin is present in one vial so you can dilute it if you, if you want to give iv drips 10 vials uh, i mean 10 international units up to four vials can be given so 40 international units is the maximum thing you can give for oxytocin oxytocin has formulations it can be a synthetic one it can be a natural one if it is a natural one it is a nanopeptide so just remember n and n with synthetic it is an octopeptide meaning eight peptide bonds are present clear contra the side effects are water retention because oxytocin and vasopressin are like technically derived from the post repetitory basically hypothalamus though so both of them are going to cause like fluid retention so makes the person looks even more bulkier post delivery okay contraindication is uh, it's a natural one so hypersensitivity is a contraindication and as i already said because iv bolus is going to give cardiac attack ar uh, arrhythmias okay and then im and iv drugs can be given im drug uh, oxytocin the duration of action will be three hours the onset is a little later three minutes but iv the onset is faster one minute and duration is one hour about methogene methogene can be given im or iv 200 micrograms the dose maximum we can give five doses every five minutes so um to two 200 micrograms into five becomes a thousand micrograms which is one mg side effect of methogene not so severe it's nausea vomiting but it has a number of contraindications it is contraindicated in preeclampsia eclampsia pregnancy induced hypertension twins 
after delivery of the first twin cardiac problems and rh high feminization the most important thing about methogene is that it is a photosensitive drug which basically means that you have to store it in a brown colored bottle because if you're going to expose the methogene to sunlight or even an operation theater light it's going to lose its potency or worst case scenario it's going to kill the boy patient do no harm guys Carboprost is a PGF2 alpha analog. 250 micrograms is a dose which is given usually, but obviously up to eight doses you can use, which brings us to two milligrams if we do the math correctly. And Carboprost just remember C A. So the first letter is C, second letter is A, means asthma, right? You never have to give this drug in an asthmatic patient. The the problem side effects are just diarrhea and like bronchoconstriction bronchoconstriction is very crucial because you can't give it in a person with asthma okay otherwise other contraindications are heart disease renal disease and liver disease the other drug is misoprostol will the above drugs uh, till now we saw oxytocin methogen and carboprost they were given either im or iv but obviously the weird one here is misoprostol because it's given either pv or pr meaning per rectal or per vaginal route so underneath we have to give the drug um the dose of misoprostol is 800 micrograms Sintometrine is oxytocin along with methogen combination, it's a newer drug. Carbitocin is synthetic oxytocin with a longer T half. So first drugs were done. Well, we started the person on IV drip and we also gave them blood blood was drawn for blood grouping and cross matching. We are waiting for blood to arrive and after that the after the blood arrives or until that we have to give crystallites blah 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 start the drugs and then tamponade tamponade can be done after the surgery we we'll see more tamponade methods can be by manual compression buckry balloon foley tamponade condom tamponade shukar spack and a tube which is used for portal hypertension treatment it's called the sing stack and black amo tube that can be used too the non hematic anti shock garment can be placed over the patient and that is helpful surgery is the next modality of choice so we are trying to oppose bring the uh, walls of the uterus together so using sutures we use cho square suture which are just four basic square shaped sutures uh present uh, put upper right upper left lower right lower left quadrants of the uterus and a beelin suture just to bring the front and the back walls of the uterus together step wise devascularization is done from more dis more specific places to more distant places and then uh, we start with uterine artery ligation at the cervical isthmic junction second is a little more distant place which is a uterine ovarian anastomosis third is rd which i like to call it it's anterior division of internal iliac artery just precisely speaking 5 cm distal to the bifurcation of the common iliac artery after that uterine artery embolization can be done if this bleeding still does not stop after that we do subtotal hysterectomy meaning a hysterectomy which is going to remove the uterus the fallopian tubes maybe you preserve the ovary for whatever reason but leave the cervix in situ okay so that was about the the pph well yeah so um a few questions which i might want to ask can be the most common cause of pph will be dash so you can think about it and put it down in the comments below and uh, what is the shock index no in a normal person and the third question is what is the shock index in a person with pph what will that thank you stay tuned